So independent of insulin resistance, we have the overall metabolic milieu with the inflammation coming from the hypertrophic fat cell that is independently contributing to further sarcopenia. And why does all of this matter? Remember, if you start losing muscle mass, you start losing your greatest metabolic advantage. Muscle acts as a tremendous metabolic buffer to pull in glucose and help blood glucose remain at a stable level. And insofar as glucose is the primary push for insulin, if you can keep your glucose normal, it's much more likely you'll keep your insulin normal. Okay, now let's flip the paradigm. As I'd mentioned here, the directionality is it goes both ways. And we just got done discussing how insulin resistance affects sarcopenic obesity. And now let's flip it and talk about how sarcopenic obesity promotes insulin resistance. In fact, before I do so, I talked about how insulin resistance contributes to sarcopenia through both the ins failure of insulin to inhibit proteolysis and the inflammation of the hypertrophic fat cell compromising muscle protein synthesis. But let's just, before we move on entirely, remind you that insulin resistance is a problem of hyperinsulinemia. And high insulin promotes fat cell growth. It promotes um, hypertrophy. This is, in my view, it's beyond debate. The evidence is so substantial. Um, there are studies that explore uh, the fat cell size in people who are insulin dependent. So people who are injecting insulin through a needle, if you look at the site of the insulin injection, compare it to just the same fat cells just a few inches away, so if a person's injecting insulin in the fat cells right here, you take a biopsy, a needle biopsy, and look at the size of those fat cells and compare it to fat cells just a couple inches over, same, say, let's say it's same belly fat, but it's not a site that the person has been injecting the insulin. The insulin cells here are about 10 times larger than the insulin, than the fat cells just a couple inches or even a couple centimeters away. So insulin has a profound effect at promoting fat cell growth. And as a reminder, even in a diabetic, too much insulin is a key driver of insulin resistance. Um, and part of this is because of what's happening at the fat cell. But insofar as we're talking about sarcopenic obesity, the higher insulin gets, the more the body wants to store energy as fat. So now we have the insulin resistance also contributing to the obesity part of this. And that's because of the elevated insulin of insulin resistance, whereas the altered, the sarcopenia and the altered muscle protein status is a result of the failure of insulin to work. Okay, now let's actually flip the paradigm and talk about how sarcopenic obesity contributes to insulin resistance. So some of this is going to be obvious because I've already been touching on it. But if a person develops, let's imagine a person developed sarcopenic obesity through a different pathology. Maybe it was a consequence of some chemotherapy that they were on or the, the wasting that comes from cancer combined with some horrific diet, you know, whatever it may be. Let's just, let's just say the person comes to this scenario with the sarcope sarcopenic obesity prior. Well, the first problem is obviously the reduced muscle mass that with less muscle mass comes a vastly compromised ability to control blood glucose. With that comes chronically elevated insulin. And um, that is, of course, going to be contributing to insulin resistance. So the loss of muscle contributes to insulin resistance. Also, we have the increased fat mass. If a person is, is developing obesity and the fat cells are growing, which happens when there are two conditions met, namely elevated insulin and to fuel the growth or, or to stimulate, sorry, we have, if fat cells are growing, it's because of two things, elevated insulin to signal the growth of the fat cell and then sufficient calories to fuel the growth of the fat cell. This is something I've already discussed previously. Just to really make it clear, you could eat all the calories you wanted or you could possibly shove in your mouth. And if insulin is low, you cannot store it as fat. The evidence for this is we need look no further than a person with type 1 diabetes. They can eat thousands of calories a day, and if they simply underdose their insulin, they will not gain a single speck of fat. Um, this is one of the primary reasons why I'm such a defender of the endocrine theory of obesity, the, relevant, the relevance of insulin, because if you remove that one single variable, no other variable matters. You want to talk about thyroid hormone, you want to talk about cortisol, you want to talk about ACP and any other signal, it doesn't matter. You literally just remove the insulin, and they cannot get fat under any circumstances.